The scriptures talk about themes like the gathering of Israel, Zion, the new Jerusalem, the latter days. What does this all mean? One of the great benefits of the Restoration and the Book of Mormon is that it gives us greater understanding into God's plan for the world, his plan for Israel as a people, his role for the church. And so today we're going to talk about what do the scriptures say and what does the church believe about God's plan for gathering Israel? What does this mean? Just to get us started here today, the Church of Jesus Christ, unlike a lot of other Christian churches, believe in a literal physical gathering of Israel, which I think for some people could sound like it's a political type of statement uh, rather than spiritual. So can you explain when the scriptures are talking about this in the gathering of Israel, what does that actually mean or what is that referring to? Well, Jared, let me let me start with that. You know, it, it actually has nothing to do with politics, right? So instead, it has everything to do with the fact that God made a covenant with a man named Abram. In the book of Genesis, chapter 17, it speaks of this. Now, his name was changed to Abraham through the covenant that God made with him. And that covenant included a blessing that he would bless his offspring, his children, his grandchildren, his great grand in fact, all of his progenitors. And it, broadly speaking, those, those offspring are referred to as Israel. They're part of his family. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel. And so rather than speaking of the country or a political statement, it's really speaking of a group of people that God made a promise to. And the Bible records much of this throughout the Old Testament, right? So the Old Testament is a, is a record of the, of the, of one of those great grandsons, Judah, the record of the Jews. And it talks about the, the rise and fall, their ups and downs, uh, uh, times when they, they loved the Lord and served him and times when they turned their back to the Lord. This covenant that we spoke of is a promise that God made, and he's going to keep that promise. God has kept every covenant and every every promise ever made. And so he made a promise, a covenant with Abraham, and so he's going to keep that promise. His desire is to gather them. So we see that throughout the Bible and the Book of Mormon, which reaffirms that same message, that there will be a physical gathering of the people of Israel, God's chosen people. So another one of those offspring or family members would be from another tribe, that of Joseph. The Book of Mormon is a record or history of of their uh, time in serving the Lord. Sometimes they served him and sometimes they turned away from him. All of those records reflect a people. We know of those two. There are other tribes that we don't know of, particularly where they're located or what record they may have that we would be able to put our hands on, like we have with the Bible or the Book of Mormon. Those other tribes, they've been scattered. And one day the scripture tells us that they would be gathered again. They'd be made known to us as to who they are and where they are. In fact, there's a, there's a verse of scripture, and it's found in the, in the book of Isaiah. In the 11th chapter, starting with verse 10, it says, And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. That's speaking of Jesus, of course. To it shall the Gentiles seek. So the Gentiles would be anyone who would not be considered part of this family or the house of Israel. It says, and the rest shall be glorious. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover a remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt, from Pathros and from Cush, from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the isles of the sea. And they shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. So even Isaiah here in this 11th chapter is is speaking of that prophetic future when this covenant would be remembered and this gathering would take place. So as a follow-up question then, is is that different than when Israel was made a nation again? Why would we not just say, well, that's, that's Israel being gathered back together? Well, clearly the physical establishment of the country of Israel is a key element in the latter days. 
what we don't see is all of those tribes being brought together, remembering, focusing on Jesus, right? This gathering, just as I read in Isaiah, just as Isaiah prophesied, the focus was about Christ. So this gathering is to bring them back together again, remembering Jesus, believing in him and in his salvation. It's, it's probably more appropriate to think of it as a step in the process. Do the scriptures give any insight of when the gathering will start? You know, that's always the, the question, right? We say that this is going to happen, and of course, everybody, everybody wants to know when. When is it going to happen? And uh, there is actually a, a passage in the Third Nephi, chapter 21, that gives some insight to it. Not that it's giving you a date or uh, saying exactly when it's going to start, but it says uh, something that indicates when the process will begin that will lead to this gathering of Israel. So we'll just read a few verses, starting from the beginning of chapter 21. It says, And verily I say unto you, I give unto you a sign that ye may know the time when these things shall be about to take place, that I shall gather in from their long dispersion my people, O house of Israel, and shall establish again among them my Zion. And behold, this is the thing which I will give unto you for a sign. For verily I say unto you that when these things which I declare unto you, and which I shall declare unto you hereafter of myself, by the way, this is Jesus speaking, and by the power of the Holy Ghost, which shall be given unto you of the Father, shall it be made known unto the Gentiles, that they may know concerning this people who are a remnant of the house of Jacob, and concerning this my people who shall be scattered by them. Verily, verily, I say unto you, when these things shall be made known unto them of the Father, it shall come forth of the Father from them unto you. This is giving an indication of when the process would begin. It's saying that uh, you know, Jesus is laying out some... Uh, uh, specifics as to what this uh, gathering would be for the uh, the people of, of Nephi, the, the remnant of the house of Joseph at that time. And he's saying that sometime in the future, when your descendants who will not be aware of this shall be notified by the Gentiles that this is going to happen, that's when the process would begin. And of course, that began when the Book of Mormon came forth, that the Book of Mormon is what has the information, and that's where this was recorded so the Book of Mormon going to the Gentiles and being presented to the house of Joseph indicates that the process has begun. So therefore, we're in that process right now, and uh, that will lead to Zion. Now, again, it doesn't necessarily answer the question of exactly when does that part begin, but the process it has begun. And so we are living in that particular period of time now. And as a little more there, it says, For its wisdom in the Father that they should be established in, in this land and be set up as a free people by the power of the Father, that these things might come forth from them unto a remnant of your seed, that the covenant of the Father may be fulfilled, which he hath covenant with his people, O house of Israel. Therefore, when these works and the works which shall be wrought among you hereafter shall come forth from the Gentiles unto your seed, which shall dwindle in unbelief because of iniquity, for thus it behooveth the Father that it should come forth from the Gentiles, that he may show forth his power unto the Gentiles, for this cause that the Gentiles, if they will not harden their hearts, that they may repent and come unto me and be baptized in my name and know of the true points of my doctrine, that they, be, that they may be numbered among my people, O house of Israel. You, you see the, the, the word Gentiles mentioned a lot here. So clearly the Gentiles have a very key role in bringing this about. The, the Book of Mormon was restored or was brought forth to Gentiles. And so Joseph Smith and, and the others who had it at the beginning, they were Gentiles. And so they uh, had the Book of Mormon. We have the Book of Mormon today. So it says it behooved the Father that it would work this way, that it would go to the Gentiles first and then would be brought to the house of Israel, to the, the house of, of Joseph. So th this is our, our role today is in bringing it forth, right? But, but I would add to that, see, that uh, the, the very last part of the last verse that I read, it said that th those who, are, who repent among the Gentiles and are baptized in my name and know the true points of my doctrine, they will be numbered among my people. Right, and and I think this is you know such a, an exciting part because otherwise, quite frankly, you know, when you read about this is what God's going to do with Israel, and this is what He's going to do with Joseph, and He's going to gather them, it's going to be a wonderful thing, and now He's using the Gentiles to bring that about. I mean, if if I'm an average person, I might say, well, what's what's in it for me here, right? I mean, it's that's great for them; they're having a great uh, homecoming and a great gathering. But you know, is, is that that just our role to set it up for them and let God bless them? I mean, nothing wrong with doing that. But here it says that those who believe in Christ, those who repent and are baptized, become part of it. They are numbered among my people. 
And, and, and so I think that's a key point that the, the Gentiles are numbered among the, uh, the, the house of Israel when they repent. So it's not necessarily only along bloodlines, but it's uh, about belief and faith in Christ that makes the difference in terms of those who are numbered in this gathering. All right, and then just to finish up that th third Nephi one, it says, when these things come to pass, that thy seed shall begin to know these things, the, the house of Joseph, it shall be a sign unto them that they may know that the work of the Father hath already commenced unto the fulfilling of the covenant which he hath made unto the people who are of the house of Israel. Okay, So when that knowledge is being transmitted, that's when it started, and that's what's going on today. So we know the process has begun that will lead to the beginning of this gathering of Israel called Zion. So, so, so what we see is, as Brother Jerry said, Jesus Christ is at the center. And, and although he didn't complete this restoration of Israel while he walked this earth, he established the gospel, which was the key and is the key. And that's why the restoration of the gospel in its fullness and in its pureness is a, an essential element of the restoration of Israel. When we're using the phrase house of Joseph, is this referring to the, de the descendants of Joseph, who was one of the one of the 12 tribes of Israel? And so the, the Book of Mormon is a record of of those people. And so that's why when it when Christ in this passage that you just read refers to your seed, he's speaking to those descendants of Joseph who are part of Israel and part of that gathering. Absolutely. Yes, yep. that's correct. And, and we see that Joseph in the, in the Bible, we read that of the, the, the role that Joseph played as he was separated from his family and, and, and went through a very, very rough time as a slave in Egypt and a prisoner, rose to become second in the kingdom under Pharaoh. And in that role, saved Israel from complete extinction on, in, in a famine. And that, that is a type and shadow of the role of Joseph in the latter days, separated from the, from the rest of Israel, having received the gospel, which is what we talked about is, is the role of the Gentiles to bring it to them. Having received the gospel will play that same role toward Israel in saving them from starvation, spiritual starvation. Yeah, I mean, these are exciting scriptures and and concepts as we as we discuss them and and we see that as brother jerry said the blessings of god are are available to everyone who will accept christ as their savior and follow in his footsteps and yet while the blessings are the same there's also specific roles that each will play you know the, the scripture tells us that the last shall be first and the first shall be last at one point the gentiles you know, they they worship pagan gods. They had they had nothing uh, of, of a relationship with the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Those those Gentiles who had who were kind of the last, if you will, now in the latter days are playing an important role, as Brother Jerry pointed out, just as Jesus spoke in Third Nephi when he came to this land, Israel, as they have their uh, as they begin to be returned back to that knowledge of Christ and are gathered together. They have that role. Uh, we each have a, a different responsibility, you might say, but all to share in the same blessings, uh, which we all look forward to. Blessings today as a member of the Church of Jesus Christ and blessings in the future as we see these uh, promises and prophecies fulfilled. It is exciting, especially reading the passage that um, Brother Jerry just went through, because it, it states in there that, the, this regathering, the very beginning of it has started. The very first things, the very first signs that it's going to happen have come to pass. And so it's very exciting. So what should we be anticipating next as we're looking forward to this physical gathering of Israel that's described in the scriptures? You know, this is um, a little sobering. And what I mean by that is if we look around in the world today, not just in our country, but throughout the world, we see conditions of sin and they, through our eyes, appear to be getting worse. You know, we see the teachings of Christ being twisted and confounded. What was once right was is now uh, wrong. What was wrong is now right. I mean, just turned upside down, contrary to the teachings of Christ. And, and, and I say it's sobering because 
you know, we hear of wars, we witness wars, there's rumors of wars. Ultimately, in order for Israel to be gathered, there has to, they're going to be gathered in a physical place. That, that process has to be among those who are righteous followers of Christ, a place that's clean of sin. You know, in, in the book of Ether, the second chapter in verse 10, it says, For behold, this land, speaking of the Americas, which is choice above all other lands, wherefore he doth, he that doth possess it shall serve God or shall be swept off. For it is the everlasting decree of God, and it is not until the fullness of iniquity among the children of the land that they are swept off. So it's sobering in as much as if we choose to not follow the, the teachings of Christ, the, the judgments of God will fall upon us. In, in, in 3 Nephi, uh, chapter 20, verses 20 through 22, it, it adds even more clarity. And it shall come to pass, saith the Father, that the sword of my justice shall hang over them at that day. And except they repent, it shall fall upon them, saith the Father, yea, even upon all the nations of the Gentiles. And it shall come to pass that I will establish my people, O house of Israel. And behold, this people will I establish in this land unto the fulfilling of the covenant which I made with your father Jacob. And it shall be a new Jerusalem, and the powers of heaven shall be in the midst of this people. Yea, even I will be in the midst of you. So these are the words of Christ speaking to those on this land. After he resurrected, he came here, he visited the, the indigenous people, the native peoples of, of the Americas, and he, he, he expresses the, this, this soberness that this land has to be kept pure. And it was established for that purpose. They were brought here for that purpose. But if the Gentiles, we've been talking about the Gentiles, if they begin to transgress and I, I fear that we see more and more of that, that the Lord's judgment will come upon uh, this land. And that's, that's a concern. It's, it's, it's troubling. But the scripture also tells us that the righteous need not fear, that when we have our trust in Christ, our trust in the Lord, that we need to continue to do just as he's commissioned us, to preach the gospel to all men and women throughout the world. That's the that's the uh, the great commission that Jesus left with, uh, we see recorded in the book of Matthew, in the 28th chapter, verses 18 through 20. And likewise, with the understanding of the Book of Mormon, that we would continue not only to preach the gospel to all men and women, but even more from a divine commission perspective, focusing on ensuring that Joseph, those indigenous people on, on the land of America, learn of Christ and learn of their history, learn of the record of their people and learn of these prophecies that will be fulfilled. And most importantly, learn of the hope of salvation. It's always amazing to me that when we read these things, they're so powerful and so energizing that we can understand why why the rest of the world can't see what we see coming for Joseph. Without the Book of Mormon, our hands will be tied behind our back, so to speak. This is a really big topic, and I think in a lot of ways we've just scratched the surface of it. Of, of this idea of the gathering of Israel, what it means, what the implications are, and how it's going to take place. And so we're going to take a pause for today. We're going to continue next time about how is this going to happen? Uh, what are we supposed to do about it? How does it affect each of us individually? And and also maybe how it a little bit of how it might compare with um, other Christian churches about our expectations for the end times. So thank you, brothers, for what you shared so far. And I look forward to continuing this conversation in the next episode. If you're watching, make sure you subscribe. Leave a comment. We appreciate it. Share this with someone you know. And we hope you join next time.